it's April now. Um, actually, it's like almost a week into April, but you know what that means. It's time for my April TBR. All the books I plan to read in April, basically. Um, I chose four again. I guess I've been choosing four books every month, but obviously I hope to read more than that. I did last month, so that was good. I'll aim higher this month, but I'm only going to talk about four in this video. <laughs> The first one that I want to get you in April is Harper Lee's Go Set a Watchman. This is the sequel, prequel, companion thingy to, um, to Kill a Mockingbird, which I read last month, so I figured I'd read this one this month. I guess I'll read what it's about. <laughs> so it is set in Maycomb, Alabama, and it's about Scout, which is the um, character from To Kill a Mockingbird, only now she's grown up, she's 26 years old, and she returns home from New York City to visit her aging father Atticus, set against the backdrop of the civil rights tensions and political turmoil that were transforming the South. Jean Louise's, Jean Louise, that's Scout's real name, um, Jean Louise's homecoming turns bittersweet when she learns disturbing truths about her close-knit family, the town, and the people dearest to her. Memories from her childhood flood back and her values and assumptions are thrown into doubt. Featuring many of the iconic characters from To Kill a Mockingbird, Ghost Set a Watchman perfectly encapture, or captures a young woman and a world in painful yet necessary transition out of the illusions of the past. A, a journey that can only be guided by one's own conscience. Written in the mid-1950s, Ghost Set a Watchman so this book was written before To Kill a Mockingbird, but it didn't come out until, like, I think, a couple of years ago. <laughs> Imparts um, a fuller, richer understanding and appreciation of Harper Lee. Here is an unforgettable novel of wisdom, humanity, passion, humor, and effortless precision. A profoundly affecting work of art that is both wonderfully evocative of another era and relevant to our own times. It not only confirms the enduring brilliance of To Kill a Mockingbird, and I agree it's brilliant, it also serves as its essential companion, adding depth, context, and new meaning to an American classic. The next book I want to read is also a reread, and it's Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowell. This won a Prince Award for Excellence in Young Adult Literature. Um, I know that this has a cute romance in it, that's just why I bought it. Because I was just so adorable. We'll have to see if it's still adorable. And I'll read what this one says, I guess. Two Misfits, One Extraordinary Love. Um, it's about a character named Eleanor and Park. They are the ones that are in love. And it says, Set over the course of one school year, this is a story of two star-crossed, like Romeo and Juliet, 16-year-olds. Um, smart enough to know that the first love almost never lasts, but brave and desperate enough to try. And next one I read, want to read, which is also a reread, is Delirium by Lauren Oliver. This is like, um, I don't know if it's called dystopian or something like that. Or it's kind of like a sci-fi kind of thing, which I'm not really into, but it's not like that much sci-fi, so I think that's fine. And also, this one also has a cute romance. Um, I'll read the back. The first book, this is the first book, I never read any of the others because I wasn't that interested, but I remember liking this one, so I figured I'd buy it. Um, the first book in Lauren Oliver's remarkable New York Times bestselling trilogy about forbidden love, revolution, and the power to choose. In an alternate United States, that's interesting, love has been declared a dangerous disease, and the government forces everyone who reaches 18 to have a procedure called the cure. Living with her aunt, uncle, and cousins in Portland, Maine, Lena Holloway is very much looking forward to being cured and living a safe, predictable life. She watched love destroy her mother and isn't about to make the same mistake. Here comes the exciting part. Within 95 days left, into a tr left until her treatment, Lena meets enigmatic Alex, a boy from the wild who lives under the government's radar. What will happen if they do the unthinkable and fall in love? I'll just have to reinvent it. How exciting! I think that's an interesting concept about the 
love being a dangerous disease and have to be cured from it. The last book I want to get to in April is The Giver by Lois Lowry. This is a reread. I read this one in school. So I bought it since I remember liking it. That's why I bought all these books because I remember liking them. Which I'm sure I'll still like them. <laughs> um, this one won a Newberry Metal for the most distinguished that's hard to read. Contribution to American Literature for Children. Um, let's see what this one says. Um, life in the community where Jonas lives is idyllic. Designated birth mothers produce new children who are assigned to appropriate family units. One male, one female to each. Citizens are assigned their partners and their jobs. No one thinks to ask questions. Everyone obeys. The community is precisely choreographed world without conflict, inequality, divorce, and unemployment, injustice, or choice. Everyone is the same, except Jonas. At the ceremony of twelve, the community's twelve-year-olds eagerly accept their predetermined life assignments, but Jonas is chosen for something special. He begins, he begins instruction in his life's work with a mysterious old man known only as the Giver. Gradually, Jonas learns that power lies in feelings. And when his own power is put to the test, when he must try to save someone he loves, he may not be ready. Is it too soon or too late? The beginning of this, where they get their, like, um, they're, like, assigned to what their life's gonna be like, sounds very much like delirium, because that's what happens there. They get, like, assigned a job, assigned a school, assigned, um, a life partner. <laughs> it sounds very similar. <laughs> Where they don't get to make their own choice about their life. <laughs> Again, what an interesting concept. So anyway, that sounds good. So these are the four books I hope to read in April. Um, which I think I'll get through them. And then I have others I want to read too. So I'll read those as well. But these ones for sure. Bye!